In this lesson, I'm going to talk about protectionist tariffs. We're going to define a protectionist tariff, and we're going to illustrate the effect of a protectionist tariff on the market for a particular good. We'll also evaluate the effect of a protectionist tariff by looking at the effect that a protectionist tariff has on domestic consumers, domestic producers, foreign producers, and the government. Let's start with the definition of a protectionist tariff. If you're studying international economics right now, you've already learned the principle of comparative advantage and how countries can increase the total welfare of their consumers and their producers if they specialize in the production of a good and trade with other countries for the goods that they do not produce domestically. While most economists agree that free trade leads to a net increase in total welfare for the countries that participate, unfortunately many times policymakers do not agree with this. Therefore, governments often impose protectionist measures in order to protect domestic industries from foreign competition. Generally speaking, in order to protect domestic producers from cheaper foreign imports. A protectionist tariff is, therefore, one of these types of protectionism. Tariff is another word for tax, so a protectionist tariff can be defined as a tax on imported goods meant to protect domestic producers of the goods from cheaper foreign competition. For our graphical analysis of the effects of a tariff, we're going to continue with the example established in a previous lesson on the gains from international trade in a supply and demand diagram. In a previous lesson, we established that South Korea has a comparative disadvantage in the production of apples compared to the United States. We showed that if South Korea chose to trade with the United States, then it could import apples at a lower world price than it could have produced domestically. In our graph on the right here, we see that the domestic price of apples of PK is higher than the world price of apples established by America and other countries with comparative advantages in apple production. Therefore, if Korea chooses to trade for apples, then it will import apples at a lower price, the trade-off being that domestic production, we'll call this QS, K for the quantity supplied by Korean farmers, will be less than the quantity demanded by Korean consumers. We'll call that QDK. However, this is not a shortage situation. Rather, Koreans are importing the difference between QSK and QDK. So the import of apples results from Korea opening its apple market to free trade and allowing Korean consumers to buy cheaper American apples at the world price of PW. But what if the Korean government, perhaps under pressure from Korean apple growers, decides to protect the Korean apple industry with the imposition of a tariff? We know that a tariff is a tax on imported goods, and only one line on this graph represents the supply of imported apples, and that is the blue world supply curve, SW. As you learned in your microeconomics units, a tax is the determinant of supply and actually increases the cost of the good that is being taxed. Therefore, we can show the impact of a tariff on imported apples by shifting the world supply curve upward, which represents a decrease in the world supply of apples. Let's do that now. We'll call this new supply curve S, W, plus T. It represents the world supply curve with the tariff added by the Korean government. This leads to an increase of the world price of apples in Korea to P, W, T, the original world price plus the tariff. Now the price of apples as seen by Korean consumers has increased. What impact will this have on the quantity demanded by Korean apple consumers and the quantity supplied by Korean apple growers? Clearly, a higher price leads to a fall in the quantity demanded. We'll call this QD1. On the other hand, an increase in the price of apples paid by consumers in Korea leads domestic apple producers to increase their production as the higher price leads to a movement along the domestic supply curve. We'll call this QS1. So what impact does the tariff on imported apples have on the quantity of imports in South Korea? Well, now that Korean apple growers are growing more apples themselves and Korean apple consumers are demanding fewer apples, there is a decrease in the quantity of imports. From QSK to QDK to the new level of imports of QS1 to QD1. Now that we've graphed the effect of the tariff on the domestic price and the domestic quantities demanded and supplied of apples in South Korea, it's time to evaluate the effect of the apple tariff on different stakeholders.
We'll start with domestic consumers. Now, if you remember from our earlier video showing the gains from trade in the Apple market for South Korea, then you'll recall the consumer surplus was the area below the domestic demand curve and above the world price. Well, now the world price of apples is higher. So the area of consumer surplus, which used to go all the way down to PW, now only goes down to PWT. Consumer surplus has decreased because the price of apples is higher and the quantity demanded is lower. So protectionism in the Apple market reduces consumer surplus, making consumers of apples in Korea worse off. This should not be a surprise. If the price of an imported good goes up, the quantity demanded will fall and consumers will be made worse off. However, if the tariff only created losers, then it wouldn't be popular at all. The tariff was originally intended not to protect Apple consumers, rather to protect Apple producers. So we can now show the impact on producer surplus. The area I'm outlining in blue represents producer surplus. Now, before the tariff, producer surplus in Korea would have only been this small blue triangle, below the price that consumers were paying above the domestic supply curve. However, however, now that the price is higher, domestic producer surplus has increased to the larger triangle below PWT and above the domestic supply curve. So to evaluate the effect of the tariff on domestic producers, we can say that producer surplus, or at least Korean producer surplus, has increased since price is higher and domestic quantity supplied is greater. Producers are made better off at the expense of domestic consumers. However, we're not done with our evaluation. We need to talk now about the impact on foreign producers, that is American apple growers and other growers in countries with comparative advantages in apples of the South Korean tariff. Let's first look at the area of foreign producer revenue from trade with Korea before the tariff was imposed. Revenue is price times quantity, and the quantity of imported apples into South Korea was the distance from QSK to QDK up to the price, giving us a foreign producer revenue area of the green rectangle. But what impact does the tariff have on foreign producer revenues? Of course, the price has risen for domestic consumers. However, some of that price is a tax paid to the government. So in fact, the price that foreign producers actually get to keep remains at PW. And the quantity of imported apples decreases to QS1 to QD1. So foreign producer revenue has shrunk to the purple area from what I had previously outlined in green. Foreign producers are worse off because they're selling fewer apples at the same world price, since the PWT includes the tariff which goes to the Korean government. PWT minus the tariff, in other words, what has to be paid to the government, leaves foreign producers with only PW per apple imported. So foreign producers are worse off. Now, what about the Korean government? The Korean government is now a stakeholder since it is imposing a tax on a good. There will be tax revenues generated from this tariff. How do we show the area of tax revenues generated by the tariff? Well, the quantity of goods being taxed is QS1 to QD1. That's the imported apples. And the amount of the tax is the vertical distance between PW and PW plus T. So there's a rectangle on this graph representing the tax revenue generated by the government. That rectangle is this orange area on the graph the distance from QS1 to QD1 and between PW and PWT. The orange rectangle represents government tax revenue, which is generated by taxing imported apples. So the government is left better off than it would have been without the tax. This is not considered an inefficiency of the tax because those tax revenues can be used to provide public and merit goods to the people of South Korea. Therefore, they actually could provide some benefit to the economy. That leaves us with one final consideration. How is total welfare affected in the Apple market in South Korea? Total welfare is the sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus. And now that we've added the government to our analysis, we can add government surplus or government welfare into our analysis of total welfare. So what is lost in the amount of total welfare following the imposition of the tariff? Well, there are two triangles on our graph which represent the loss of welfare resulting for society as a whole 
from this tariff. Now this only considers Korean society in fact. This does not take into account the loss of welfare resulting for American farmers and other countries farmers where apples were produced more efficiently and that used to be sold to Korea. The two black triangles represent the loss of total welfare or the dead weight loss of the apple tariff. So we can say there is a loss of total welfare resulting from the decrease in consumer surplus not made up for by the increase in government tax revenue. So there is a gain of the orange area and there is a gain in the blue area and the increase in producer surplus. However, these increases in producer surplus and government tax revenue are not as large as the amount by which consumer surplus is reduced in the Apple market. As we can see, the Apple tariff in South Korea has created more losers than it has winners from a total welfare perspective. The loss of consumer surplus exceeds the increase in producer surplus in government revenue resulting from the tariff by the amount represented by these two black triangles. If we further take into account the impact on foreign producers, there is a loss of foreign producer revenues. Therefore, producer surplus in the United States and other Apple exporting nations is reduced as well. In this lesson, we have defined a protectionist tariff as a tax on imports. We have graphed the impact of a tariff using the Apple market in South Korea as an example, and we have evaluated the effect of the tariff on different stakeholders, concluding that overall there will be a loss in total welfare resulting from a tariff on imports.